Everyone, introduce yourself as if we are on the first episode of a show. Your actual name and your player's name. Uh, uh, very brief uh, information about your character. And we'll go around the room, and then we'll go to the virtual. Okay. Okay, I'm playing Caddick Hartford, who is a uh, squire from Oak Frost in the north, and he is traveling to the Arcane City. Um, his father is going there, who's a lord, on some sort of business, and he's bringing some of his family with him. Huh. By Rob Spatero. By Rob Spatero. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm Damien, and I'll be playing Dash Loman. I'm a beast born reptile man uh, who is going to be a gunslinger of sorts. Okay, that's what I've been. I'm Vinny Pro, and I am playing a soul born. Crystal born. Crystal born. I'm sorry. Brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know what it is. <laughs> Awesome. Any information you want to tell us? Uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna kind of let that one simmer for a little bit and let everybody try to figure out what it is. Awesome. Let's go. To, <laughs> let's go to Brooke. Wait, figure out what his name is. Okay. Yeah, that's true. He, he, he has no name. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Brooke Armstrong, and my character's name is Maya Ray Hopestill. She is a an 18 year old Seth, as we call it. And uh, she lives in the city, was born and raised in Solst. She is a scavenger for her family's business. Her family runs uh, an apothecary, kind of, like with very rare items that are only sold in Solst. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Let's go to Tom. Hi, I'm Tom Kokoza. Uh, and my character's name is Robin Ariki. Uh, he is a translator. Uh, in Solst, so he works to help, uh, you know, uh, he helps help traders and people come into town who don't necessarily speak the language. Uh, and he also will help you out if there's any, if there's anything that you need, he's there to help. And let's go to Dan Isgro. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Dan Isgro. Um, I'll be playing the character of Vigorish, who is uh, a young elf who lives in Solst. Um, he lives with his mom. And uh, by day, he plays his uh, song horn in the streets. So uh, a lot of the locals know him from uh, from the music that he plays. And by night, he is a runner for uh, the gambling scene in the fighting pits in the underbelly of Solst. Awesome, everybody. So that those are your characters. Now, guys, if you look at the, the bottom of your screen from left to right, uh, from the left, that is Damien's character, Dash. Um, the next character is Dan's character, uh, Vigorish. Then you have Maya, Brooke's character, and uh, the Seth is is very similar to the Tief Tiefling. Uh, for anyone who plays other uh, other systems, Dungeon Dragons. On the other side of the screen, you have uh, Kadic, which is Rob's character. Um, he's from Oak Frost up north. That, that's a place we did not visit. We all, and we heard about it a bit. We did not visit that in Celestial War. Uh, you have Tom's character, uh, which is Robin, um, and then you have all the way on the right, you have Vin's character which has no name at this point. In fact, he's not even born yet. So I'm going to start, start with that first fact, that he's not born. So... Just, just going to leave that sit. Hopefully Vince's character will be born on the show. Hopefully. In front of all he's of gonna us. Hatch, <laughs> he's going to hatch? Maybe. Something like that. Something like that, yes. <laughs> okay, so before, before we begin, uh, the tone of this is going to be very different. Guys, pay attention to the details. Last time, I usually tell you guys, don't, don't get lost in the details, but I'm going to tell this group... Pay attention to the details. <laughs> this is not a good quest. This is a neutral quest. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is a different tone. Okay? I've changed a few things around. Okay? The first thing I've changed around, I'm going to announce right now, is that rerolls. Rerolls are very popular with the audience. You can now give rerolls to the, the people you see around here, to the Oi Dungeon crew. They call it, they're 500 stars. Okay? And on your sheet, it's listed as karma. Okay? Mm. So Ooh. now. Whenever you make a roll and you want to use karma, you can only use one karma for a reroll. No longer two. Only one. And you can use it for yourself. You can use it against me, which we the fans have called reroni. You can use it against <laughs> me. Or if you have a problem with somebody else at this table or anyone else, you can use it versus them if you like. Okay? Now, everyone loves to see session zero, see the beginning how it is. You're gonna see right now the abilities that I'm handing out for them for zero level characters. Rob, we're gonna go to you first. You're starting off as your profession is squire, and that's the kind of your squire right now, and you were set to be a knight. But your story is that you are coming, going to Solst, uh, kind of forced by your father. You were the second born in your family, 
You left Oak Frost. Your father has some important business with Miss Solst. Took you with him. Your mother and your older, your eldest brother, your your one uh, only brother, um, stayed behind to run the family and affairs up in Oak Frost. You guys traveled a long way down to down to Solst. As we've talked about your character already, you know that you don't want to go here. Your whole life is set up to be a knight of Oak Frost and to do what you're meant to do in your eyes. But it's kind of been stolen from you. It's been taken away. Let's go to let's go to Damien's character. Damien, you're playing. Your profession is a thug. Reptilian born. You're a beast sure. born. Okay. You work as a thug uh, for the Iron Circle. Guys, this quest takes place in Solst, the arcane city. Imagine like a grimy New York City. All the this the city are clustered together. And uh, but it's a beautiful city. It's covered by a shield. It's surrounded. It's surrounded by walls. The Walking Tower, if you remember, for Celestial Wars, is out in the, in the, the bay nearby. Um, it's more like a great lake than a bay, I suppose. Um, and the, the streets kind of like go through and kind of wind through. So you're you're a thug. You basically work as uh, like the muscle, you know, if you will. Uh, your guy is more fast and strong, but still, you're a seven foot reptile man. <laughs> I you know would run the other way if I saw you. You work for them. The other, the only other thing you do besides manning the door and doing a couple of, of odd, odd jobs here and there is sometimes you protect the runners. There's a few guys like you. You guys all know each other. It's probably about five or six. You don't work for them on the high end. You work for the lower guys. Okay? Okay. Um, the guy that you work for is Silas with a C. Okay? Silas is that the guy people know, and they know that he's got a boss, and that boss is a boss, and then no one knows who the, the supposed Iron Circle are. People think the Iron Circle are the elites of Arcane City. No one really knows. We're going to go over to Vin. Vin, you're not born yet. You know nothing about yourself. Excellent. You have a small experience of life. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you have that in a moment, and then nothing. Oh, okay. man. Okay. <laughs> Next. That's your backstory. Excellent. I like it. That's <laughs> your <laughs> backstory. <laughs> Simple. Okay, now we're going to head over to uh, Tom. I can work with that. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. <laughs> That's, uh, I hope it's a little bit more than the Oz. It's oh, two Oz. So, uh, Tom, you work You work once again. Guys, every, if you know Tom and Findalar from the last quest, <laughs> wait for it. Tom works for the government. Again, <laughs> you can't help it. Big, when big, Tom, big when stretch. Tom, if Tom's gonna go into a fancy environment, he's working for the government. <laughs> Look, I want to be a, a knight. Up. Nope. It's a good. It's a good job. <laughs> Got benefits. Look, he's, and, already, he's uh, already dressed for it. <laughs> 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 so uh, this is this is a different. This is an opportunity. That's all this is. Exactly. Exactly. You work at Arknum's Tower. Arknum is the okay. magistrate for Arcane City. He handles everything to do with the law and the policy. And he's a very important figure. Um, he technically, uh, Zerilius is still in charge of, of the city, but people know like Arknum is really, really like a power player for uh, the governmental society in the Arcane City. Uh, you work in all different jobs. Wherever they need you to apply for translations, you as people come in trading, uh, if it's a diplomat, even royalty, you they, they set you up. And because you know you can speak uh, probably about four, probably, probably four or five languages. Um, you're able to kind of either get, either get get by and you know do what you have to do, or you're fluent. Uh, one of the, of the of the things that you speak is Seth, which is again, which is similar to like a Tiefling character in Dungeons and Dragons, very similar. Um, you speak Seth. You obviously speak your. You, you obviously can speak Elven and Common automatically, and then you could pick. Um, I'll let you pick three more actually on top of that that you could speak. Nice. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, you've worked for for a while there. Your father is actually the fan player character in Mistar, yes. which, which is Richard Wilde, <laughs> or, or I believe he's here right now. That's that's your father, and your father's not around that much because he's constantly out working for the exchange and doing things like that. Uh, Tom kind of you know is kind of trying to be an or, or not trying to be being a bit of an overachiever, you know, and trying to you know do as best he could. And did achieve a lot because of that. So you found your way into a good position. In this city, in the city of Seoul, so the Arcane City, many people are not even considered citizens. To be considered a citizen is a high honor. So it's like they see that you're part of it, but they don't recognize you for anything anything significant. Around the city, they have what's known as, as Seekers. These are wizards who go around and basically enforce their power. Think Judge Dredd, because they can they can admit, say that you're guilty on the spot. And they, they bring you to Ar Arknum's Tower. And then there, there's a, there's like another process to go through about your guilt or your innocence. And that's Great. where it gets dicey. 
<laughs> That's where it gets real dicey. <laughs> so they can just take you in if they want to, or they, they pass judgment, whatever it is. Um, and they have a lot of authority, and they constantly abuse their authority. Okay? They can be bribed. That, that's a known thing. And the city is very is very diverse, going from the rich to the poor. The poor live in what's called the Rim, which is the outer parts of, of the Arcane City. And the rich mostly live in Center Circle, which is in the, the center of the city. That's where Arctum's Tower is, very, very close by. Um, the city is located on the water where there is docks. There's a marketplace called the Bazaar, which people and there's a couple of different taverns around the area. Uh, you'll have to learn about that. We're going to head over to Dan's character. Dan... You're playing Vigorish. You're a bard. Uh, Tom, oh, Tom, by the way, Tom is a thief. We didn't, we didn't make that clear. And or pursuing to be a thief. You're all zero level characters. Um, and, thief. Yeah, a thief. Yes. Oh yeah, uh, Damien. You're a gunslinger. Obviously, you, yes. You, everybody doesn't, doesn't know that. And you're a uh, Rob. You're a knight or a fighter. Uh, your character will actually will develop in that way. Dan works as a runner. So as we talked about Scro a Scro's character, where you are uh, kind of the thug, you're the muscle. This is one of the runners that kind of, they're friendly. They're not, they're, they, you know, they, they talk to people. They just kind of just act. So people know they have no real weight in the Iron Circle, in their society, but they're also protected by them, which makes them a very dangerous person. And they know that usually somebody else, of uh, like an enforcer, like you, Damien, is floating or floating around to kind of apply some pressure if needed. Mm. Okay? So, Dan, you've been doing that for a while. During the day, you're on the streets playing your horn, which is what you chose. And, uh, mm. you know, you're taking care of your mother when you can. You, you, you do live with your mom. You're, everybody's very young here, by the way. We're playing very young characters for the most part. Anywhere in their teens up to their 20s. Um, and by night... You work for the for the Iron Circle, and you work for Silas, just like uh, Damien's character does. And you guys know you guys know each other. You're not best friends. You don't hang out with each other uh, outside of there at all. But you do know each other very well. And that is it. Any questions you want to ask me about Vigorish? Um. Yeah, Vigorish. Vigorish. Sorry. Um. So so what's so what are the difference between the two jobs that I'm doing and what Dash is doing? Dash is getting into combat, getting into sticky situations constantly. You're just getting in, asking asking for the money, collecting, running notes or messages, uh, doing signaling people if something has to happen, you know, anything like that. Anything that is commu communicative or passing on something or delivering or things like that. You're a gopher sometimes, okay. fetching. Uh, you know that basically if you saw Damien behind you, you know that Damien is going to fight if it comes down to a fight. Okay. And the, the guy I work for is named <laughs> Silas? Silas with a C. Yes, and you don't often even even. Sometimes you get directed by him directly, but many times it's through his associates that you get. Uh, you like you like you guys will arrive. You uh, constantly go to the the Fire and Fury, which is the tavern and uh, inn located in the Rim, which is like the poorest part of the city. Okay, and what is Silas's position? Uh, what's his position? <sighs> you don't know it. You don't really know him to have a position. You just know that he's important in the Iron Circle. If he has a, has okay. like a certain certain title, you're not sure what it is. It's just like there's Silas. Go talk to him. He's in charge. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna go over to uh, Brook. Brook's character is named Maya. Brook, your your profession is a scavenger. So your character, your family uh, owns the apothecary. You don't know anything about being an apothecary. Okay, right. so it's something that you maybe you're intrigued with. You you can decide that as your backstory. Uh, you think it's interesting. It's what the family does. It's very normal to you because it's all you've been around your whole life. You found worth in doing something that you really shouldn't do. Your your parents started sending you out to to the bazaar to go get different things. The bazaar in Solst is probably one of the best in the world, only rivaled by the Queen Cities. The Queen Cities are known for for immense trade. Solst. Especially the fact that it's, it, it stayed isolated, but it allows trading to come out and in. They only allow the select high-tier guests come in. And if anyone walks through the shield in a city, they've you know they've been invited, and they're arriving the exact time they're supposed to arrive. Okay? They don't otherwise they don't let you out and they don't let you in. All the people in Souls, which is probably a few hundred thousand, do not leave the shield unless they came in because they're in a ship, a merchant that with somebody important, or again they have to be approved in and out, and it's not an easy thing to get in and out. So. You have gone, constantly gone to the bazaar to collect different things. You did that for a while, and you kind of wanted to help the family out because the family, because you, you uh, were going, they were going through rough times, and you wanted to do more. And you realize a lot of things they need should be really easy to get if only there wasn't a giant arcane shield around the city, because some of the things they need are simple things found in nature, but it's right outside of the shield. You found out 
just on a hunch from what you know about being a Seth is that you believe it's possible you could get through the shield. And one day, that was kind of, while that being the back of your mind, you found a weak point in the shield somewhere near the bazaar, south of it. And you realize that if no one was looking around and you literally push your body against it, you feel a surge, kind of like feeling electricity running through you, but it didn't kill you. It was probably a very stupid thing to try, but you got through the shield and on the, and on the other side, you were amazed. You ran to the forest, which is about 300 feet, and you hid behind it on a tree and no one caught you. No one saw you. You found you went to the forest and you started collecting different things. Different things that are, again, are common to Andaria, but completely uncommon and very highly priced in Solst because no one goes in, no one goes out. You started doing that about six months ago and you've gone outside probably two dozen times <clears throat> and you've got it down to a science. You get in, you know that, you know how, when, when they, they do their, uh, they do the shift changes for the, for the guards, when the seekers are not around, uh, sometimes you time it with, with the daytime, you know when they let traders in, you pretty much have all of the routines down. You're not a thief. But if you were, you're the perfect scout. You've scouted everything. You've, you're the ultimate loca scout, lo uh, location scout for the entire souls. You know pretty much everyone who's outside. In buildings, you know nothing. But all the walls, everything like that, even down by the docks, you know the changes because you feel like it's important. And you're making so much money doing this, your family is, not you, that like, this is very valuable. Have you told your family? Nope. They have no idea you're doing it. Oh, they don't man. understand how you're doing it. They, they'd say that you got the magic touch, you know, and they don't understand how resourceful you are. They compare you to your grandmother about how resourceful and clever she was. Um, and you've just been helping out your family. You try to do it a little bit more than you have to. Like, you, you make sure the family doesn't go down to broke. But you're keeping them alive simply by what you're doing. It's very important to you. I imagine, like, your last character, Abyssia, that family is very important to this character as well. Yes. Guys, that is it. Those are your characters. Now... I have one more thing to award you guys. Everyone, except for Rob. Because you know Rob. Who, who wants to give him something for free? No. I want to make it, want it to be harder for you. No, I'm kidding. Um, so everyone is going to take <laughs> magic, okay? And put it under talent. Yay! Okay? You don't have that, you're from Oak Frost. And everyone, including Rob, can also take knowledge uh, daggers. Let us begin. This is a much different quest than before. It requires a little reverb. I am now going to tell you a truth and a lie. One thing I tell you will be truthful. One thing I tell you will be false. I have in my mind A and B. Brooke, which one do you want to hear first? B. B. Remember, one is a truth, one is a lie. Okay. Here is B. One person in this quest has split personalities and their second personality is very violent that they've designed and their entire goal for fun is to kill everyone else in the party on audio dungeon. To go and theme. <sighs> Here's A. At least one person in the party is already dead. One of these is true. One of these is false. This quest, the Arcane City, allows me one more chance mm. to kill Brooke Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. That was true. That was true. Oh my god, man. Or one of your other players to kill Brooke Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Dream! Remember, all these decisions okay. are based on you guys. It's what you wanted, and I love it. Let's just say that. I love it. <laughs> so be careful. You are zero level. You do not have many hit points. 